head of the biochar for a long time, and so I thought I would take this opportunity to do it now. It's um, it's really warm out, so it's kind of foolish, but I've had a lot of people ask me how to do it, and so I'm going to show you. I also need to get a hold of some clay real soon because I've managed to kill every chimney I've ever made, but it'll still work. So. Okay, so this is a fuel cell. It has primary and secondary air holes and some char left in it from the last time I burned it. Yay! This is a snuffer bucket. And it has a lot of char in it too that I'm using for the garden. is what the char looks like. Just carbon. When you use a, a biochar, you are, in effect, requesting carbon. And that's a good thing. Um, this is the holding vessel. It's a cylinder, and it has air holes right around here. You set it on something that's non-burnable. <coughs> We're doing the boat outside, so I'm not going to worry about a CO monitor or a smoke detector. If you light it properly, there shouldn't be smoke. One of the things that we do in order to keep it from smoking is when you fill it with your fuel, which I'm just uh, any kind of biomass, I'm using wood pellets because they work really well. They're real dense. You want a fuel that uh, the molecular structure is pretty dense on, and that looks better. You don't want to fill it above the air holes that are around the lip. And I use alcohol to catch it on fire because alcohol is cheap and it works really well. And I use a lot of propane because I use this to supplement my heat in the, in the winter time in the house. And if I'm going to have something in the house, I want it to, to smoke. Uh, and the way to alleviate smoking is to get it to all burn and light nicely on top. So I slush in a little alcohol. And it usually catches really good within a matter of minutes. Usually a minute. Like I said, I always want to get the top burning really well um, so that it doesn't smoke. Now, people call these gasifiers. They call them TLUDs, top loading up dress stoves, or TLUDs, top lit up dress stoves. I've seen people make them out of coffee pots, all kinds of metal. You can use cans, like a paint can, and, and a can that sits down into it, and then you create your chimney with a, like a, a duct or a vent. And that works really well. It's not PVC. Heavy metal. I think I'm the only person in the United States who makes them out of clay, as far as I know. Well, myself and my students. They uh, have some really good biochar makers at school. It was uh, The best thing about that is whenever I brought them in to demonstrate it for the kids, they said, when can we make one? I love that kind of enthusiasm. Okay, so it's lit, and you see that it's not smoking, which is really awesome, especially if you're going to use this to supplement your heat in the house. I'm going to bring the camera over because I want you to see it um, into the pot, and you can't do that where it's at. So, nice, very nice. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is go ahead and put the chimney on it. I don't want to call it a smokestack because um, it doesn't smoke, so... It would be false to call it a smokestack. Um, set the base of the chimney on top first. And normally, this part would already be attached. But like I said, um, I have real problems with not killing stuff, especially if it's made from clay. Ta-da! And there's a biochar. 
Now what happens is your biomass, which is just a fancy name for anything that's biological or made from living things, <coughs> your biomass burns up and what it, and the smoke, it, it's like the char eats the smoke and that's why this isn't smoking. That's why I could use this in my home with a metal plate under it so that if any of the ashes fall out of the secondary air holes, it's just going to land on the metal plate and not my carpet. Um, 50% of this goes to char, and that's to fertilize your garden. It's what the Amazon Indians did thousands and thousands of years ago. And when you fertilize your garden with stove ashes, it lasts for about a year. But if you use char, or the sequestered carbon, it'll last for hundreds of years and make some of the most fertile, most beautiful black soil. char and then 50% goes to energy to heat your home or whatever and this is really hot. I don't know if you can see the shimmy but it's there. Um, and this will burn for probably, this fuel cell will probably last a good two or three hours. I want to make them bigger because I want to be able to load them and let them burn in my home for four or five hours rather than having to dump and snap and reload every two or three just makes more sense. And I want to put handles on the fuel cell because that way it can be easily removed. When this does burn up all the way, I'll take the chimney off in pieces and then I, with my gloves, and I do have some gloves now. I do. My brother gave them to me. Thank you, Tom. He didn't want me to burn myself up. Um, so that was really nice of him. I love him a lot. So what I'm going to do is take my gloves, if I can find them, <laughs> and take this off, and then when it's all burned down, I, I will take the fuel cell out and dump it, and then snuff it with this lid, and then use this char for my garden. I can't stress to you enough the reason that this is so important is that it's part of the for our world, and that's something that we should all be trying to do. Also, you can increase this area right here that goes at the base of the um, chimney. Don't call it a smoke set because it doesn't smoke. Um, and, and use it as like a plancha type oven or stove. That's kind of cool. People can also, you know, in third world countries it would be really wonderful if people started getting together and creating biochars and using them for heat and to boil water. And, you know, if I put a butt pan on this, you know, not this model. I could boil water that way. And this stays, this, the holding vessel stays pretty cool to the touch to where I can even move it. Uh, the chimney does not. You don't want to touch the chimney. And um, this will eventually do that. But I think if I increase the size of them and put handles on the fuel cell, increase this area so that it can be cooked on, this is something that we can use um, if the grid dies, or even if the electricity goes out for a while during a storm or something, this is really nice to have. And people always tell me, are you one of those crazy survivalists? I'm really not. <clears throat> but I always tell them that you have insurance on your home, right, just in case something happens. Well, I want to have insurance in my home just in case I need to <coughs> and clean and, and um, keep my home warm and grow vegetables to eat. I think it's a real good thing to have something like this. And so, uh, if they want to call me a crazy survivalist, that's fine too. Um, what else was I going to say? Um, another important thing about the biochar. Well, I, it, it left me. Anyway, so I'm going to turn this machine off, and then whenever it's finished, I'll show you how to dump and snap it and reload. cats and I have about 35 cats and I'm a crazy cat lady because I have a bunch of strays who live in my garage with my neuter cats <coughs> and they had about six litters of kitties. Anyway, so I'll show you again inside.